transfusing myself into the order of grace, into the divine volition, I enter the great sacred heart of Jesus. This heart big enough to hold all of creation and all creatures therein. I see that some creatures do not want to stay here and they are forcefully leaving. As I see this, Jesus' heart sheds blood. I substitute for each one of these creatures who deny his excessive love for them. Then, bringing all souls with me, remaining in the sacred heart, we see that Jesus is fallen into a pool of his own blood after the scourging, and we see the executioners dragging him. As Jesus is dragged, he tries to get a foothold on the ground in order to walk, but his energy has deserted him in the cruel blows and loss of blood, and he cannot. So he is dragged to a place where we also go, as we are inside his great part. As the executioners sit Jesus down, place a filthy purple mantle over his shoulders, and in a manner of mocking his kingship, a reed in his holy bloodied hands, and as a crown on his head, they place a bundle of thorns. As the thorns are placed upon his head, and they beat them in with rods. From within his sacred heart, we see that while the thorns are truly excruciating, it is the evil thoughts of all mankind that enter his mind along with the thorns into his head that cause even more pain. These evil thoughts bring intense disgust to the pure and holy mind of Jesus and he can barely tolerate the intense disgust that overwhelms him. Sweet Jesus, we wish to, in some small way, alleviate this sorrow on your behalf, so we offer to you all the pure and holy thoughts of Mama Mary, your putative father, Saint Joseph, and all the angels who pass the test and are waiting for your slightest wish in order to fulfil it. The executioners begin to mock and deride Jesus. They place a filthy rag over his eyes and make great sport of him. We understand that through this blindfold, Jesus makes reparation to the Father for all blind souls who refuse to see his goodness to them, who run blindly into sin and committing great sins, which begin first in the thoughts of humankind, then play out in oppression of others, sinful actions either alone or with others, robbery, murder and warmongering, to name just a few. Oh, how these actions tear at the heart of Jesus, and we hear his heartbeats quicken in the great sorrow he experiences. Allow us, dearest Lord, to offer you some small relief by offering you all the holy and upright actions of all your saints, the martyrdoms of many creatures who refuse to say no to you even in the face of death, and the thanksgiving, love and adoration, which is constantly being poured out between the Father, yourself, dear Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. May this in some small way give you a relief from the wicked and evil thoughts of all men. In fact, you allowed yourself to be crowned with these thorns three times, each more painful than the last as the subsequent crownings were done over a head now filled with broken thorns and coagulated blood. Such are the sins of thought of all mankind. How we love you, Lord, but we know that our own love is so small and insignificant that we take the love and all the actions of your and our mother and offer them to you. Please, Jesus, as we love you, May we always stay in your sacred heart to experience your love for us and to reciprocate by making your love our own and offering it back to you. May we always be aware of this, our dear and sweet Lord. Amen. Fiat, fiat, fiat. <laughs>